Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So the game officially global launched. So we have a huge surge of new players in the game. This is a very exciting moment. And for the occasion, I thought I should create a video where I'm going to give you five top meta decks for all the new players. Uh, those decks are going to work everywhere in the game in PvP or PvE. So these are five decks for you guys to try. And these are five decks from five different factions. So you're going to need five different decks uh, from five different faction. Once you reach Heroic, that's uh, at 50 sigils. So uh, I guess you could just take these five decks and run with it because these five decks are really good. So we'll go into each one of those decks. But first, before we do so, guys, if you love the content, if you guys are new to the game, love the content, please leave a like and subscribe. Uh, it helps me out a lot and uh, I'm going to do much more content on this amazing game. So if you want to be here along for the ride, just click subscribe down below. And uh, also, I'm going to be streaming today. So basically, when you guys see this video, um, I should be live. So I'm starting the stream at 10 a.m. Eastern on November 3rd for the launch of the game. So if you guys are there, click on the channel, come join the chat and I'll be uh, pleased uh, to talk with you guys. But uh, without further ado, let's jump right into it with our first deck. So in this video, I'm actually going to describe a little bit more what each of these cards do uh, because this is more tailored for newer players. So uh, just keep that in mind. If you guys are more veteran players, uh, I might go a little bit uh, slower for you guys so you could jump to uh, the other decks. Um, but yeah, so the first deck, Rand Black, and this is a leader from the Black Rock faction and uh what does black hand do so ran black hand has the ability of black in disguise where your other flying troops cost one less gold while rand is in play so basically we're gonna play a rand air deck so we're gonna play only or not only but a lot of other air units that are gonna get discounted from rand black hand and the four air units we have in this list are the drake the whelp x the gargoyle and the Harpies. So, first of all, the Harpies. The Harpies are probably the best unit in the game. Uh, what they do basically is they are a group of three Harpies. They deal uh, quite a lot of damage, but are very weak to AOE, so area of effect. So there's a lot of troops that can defeat the Harpies easily. However, in this deck, we have a way to protect them. So they deal a lot of damage in their air units, but they need to be protected and we are going to protect them with the Earth Elemental. Okay, so the Earth Elemental is meant to be played on a turret once the Harpies arrive. Uh, so the turret will focus the Earth Elemental and then the Harpies will be able to destroy the turret or destroy whatever is important. You can also play the Earth Elemental on the enemy backline on whatever the opponent is playing to uh, attack your Harpies. So the Earth Elemental is there to distract the uh, big, uh, the big splash damage units from your opponent, and then the harpies can take down, take them down. So this is a great combo, harpies with any other unbound units. So yeah, guys, uh, I, I forgot to mention a really important piece of the puzzle: uh, the earth elemental is unbound. So unbound units means you can play them anywhere uh, on the map. So this is why you can play the earth elemental to distract your uh, your opponent backline because your harpies are going to approach and then you play the earth elemental uh, behind the enemy or behind the turret like we can see in the video right here and we're going to get just so much value so earth elemental with the harpies the, and the harpies are the flying damage dealers uh, in this deck so uh keep in mind also that the harpies are going to cost Two, right? Because uh, if we play Rand, well, if we play Rand Blackhand beforehand, then we're going to be able to play the Harpies for just two, which is crazy good value. So uh, another main idea in this in this list is to play Gargoyle. So we have Gargoyle. The Gargoyle is a air unit uh, that only attacks uh, structures. Okay. However, that's unit or the gargoyle has a lot of health and it's also armored so a uh, very very good unit because it deals so so much damage to structures but we need to help the gargoyle to get there so how are we going to help the gargoyle we're going to help it with playing our drake 
Archdrake is a flying damage dealer, but this one does AoE. So if your opponent is playing any uh, swarm units, well, then the Drake is better to deal with uh, those than the Harpies. Or we're also going to defend it with our Rend Blackhand. So basically, Rend Blackhand, our leader, costs six. It's basically a Drake. But when the Drake dies, uh, it spawns Rend Blackhand on uh, the battleground, and he's going to charge forward, deal damage. Um, yeah, so very good unit. The idea is we play Rand behind as far back as possible, and then we play the Gargoyle in front of it. So then any unit that attacks your Gargoyle that has uh, a lot of health, well, then uh, Rand is going to be able to take them down because Rand or the Drake from Rand doesn't have that much health. So we play Gargoyle behind and then we play, uh, sorry, we play Rand behind and then we play Gargoyle in front so that they're just one behind the other. The Gargoyle is, is soaking the damage and the Rand is splashing uh, in front, dealing a huge ton of damage. And meanwhile, we can do in, like in another lane, the push with Harpies that are going to cost two and Earth Elemental to uh, do another push in another lane. Uh, so, we're going to need to defend, okay? Because if our opponent is playing any ground troop uh, that charges, we're going to have a really hard time to deal with them because they're just going to ignore our air unit and charge to our base. So that's why we have the Whelp Egg. So what does the Whelp Eggs do? The Whelp Eggs are a unit that uh, they spawn, and they just spawn as eggs. And until they're destroyed, they won't do anything. However, the idea is to play them closer to your base, so when your opponent is pushing with something, he's going to focus those whelp eggs, uh, which are going to spawn those whelps. And the whelps are uh, aerial unit. I think they deal uh, a little bit of splash damage, um, and but they deal just a lot of damage overall. So it's a little bit like harpies, uh, but it's really good to force your opponent to attack them. So really, really good unit. So you play your whelp eggs to defend, and you also have your safe pilot so the safe pilot you guys must all have it i think it's one of the first unit you get in the game the safe pilot um kind of acts like a spell in this list so you play to destroy any backline that would be an issue for example the dark spear troll so the dark spear troll we can actually see it right here in the video is a range unit that destroys all our air units so you can just crash a safe pilot into the dark spear trolls or the other air units um and protect our other stuff so yeah guys crazy crazy deck this deck is really really good in pve but it's also very good in pvp especially with the current map rotation so this deck very very good and that is why this is the first list i wanted to show you guys next up next up we have my favorite list in the game and it's a Tyrion Footman push. So, what does Tyrion do? Tyrion Fordering, he's a melee unit and he's also armored. So, armored means you take less damage from physical uh, attacks. So, the Tyrion is a tank armored, but actually you don't want to play it as a tank. What you want to do is play it behind our Footman because the, the Tyrion has the... Holy Light ability where he heals all nearby friendly unit. Um, I think it's periodically every couple of seconds. But this is very, very good when we pair him with the Footmen. Because the Footmen are other melee units. But this time we have four of them for only five goals. So the uh, they don't do crazy, crazy amount of damage. But together they do a lot of damage. So individually they don't. But together they deal crazy amounts of damage. But... With Tyrion, they're just gonna always gonna stay alive because Tyrion heals as an AoE. So it's a classic, classic combo of playing Tyrion with Footman. It creates a huge, huge push. We're just gonna be weak to any big uh, AoE ability from, uh, uh, let's say, spells or uh, like a Drake or stuff like that. So we have to play some other stuff to protect them. We have the uh, Griffin Rider. So the Griffin Rider. He's an uh, air unit that costs only two. Or I, th is, I think that's a she. She's an air unit that costs only two uh, and deals a very good bit of damage um, by herself. She's not uh, tanky at all. She's very, very weak. But if you play her well, um, you're going to be able to take down some very important targets. Um, I guess more in defense, but in offense as well. Uh, this she can be very good to deal with uh, the Drake if you need to um, But yeah better than 
that to deal with the Drake. We uh, once again have the safe pilot. So the safe pilot once again to protect. Um, we can play a safe pilot to to destroy uh, the Drake, to destroy uh, like a Bat Rider on the other side or Griffin Rider on the other side. Dark Spear Troll, so many different stuff. Uh, Dark Spear Troll shouldn't be an issue. Uh, Griffin Rider um, as well. But like for example, Bat Rider um, or the Drake, something like that. You could just crash a safe pilot, get a lot of value, and protect your uh, Tyrion Footman push. Uh, to add just a little bit of extra um, anti-air, we have the Murlocs. So the Murlocs are a pair of two Murlocs that are um, anti-air units. So they're really good because they are very cheap. So we can play them in this list behind our combo. So if there's any air unit that causes issues, the Murloc are going to be able to destroy them. Plus, just for two gold, they're really good at taking chests. So in the game, we have chests. When we take down chests, we actually get two gold. So they get their own cost refunded pretty easily. And also we deny the cost from uh, the... Oh, we deny the gold from the opponent. So they're Murlocs, very, very good. Also, uh, just like a safe pilot, we also have Blizzard. So Blizzard guys, is one of the best spell in the games. It costs quite a bit with a four uh, gold cost, but it deals so much, so much damage. So if you guys want to play Blizzard, Blizzard is very, very good. I really suggest playing it in this list. Um, for Once again, for some units that are really, really hard to deal with, uh, we have not only the safe pilot, but we also have the Blizzard. <clears throat> you can um, use the Blizzard to completely change the uh, tides of the battlefield. Um, it gets so much value just for four. For example, like in this video, I think it gets something like six or seven gold value for four. It's uh, very, very good. <coughs> we also have in this list another healer. So we have the Frostwolf Shaman, which is a healer. Um, the Shaman heals by um, doing like a chain heal. So it heals like three targets. So it's really good once again with the footmans because it's going to heal all of them. So if you have a Tyrion and a Frosthole Shaman um, in the same lane, well, then you have so, so much heal. So guys, I went quickly over every single unit, but there's a crazy play you can do in this list. So this list is actually my creation. I think it's a very, very, very good list. Um, the best, I think it's the best uh, Tyrion list out there but you can split, okay? So basically, if you play your units exactly on the line between two tiles or between two spawning pools, right? If you play it exactly in the middle, the units are gonna go half and half. So we can actually see that in the video of the footmen. So we can see here that the footmen are actually gonna split, two are gonna go in each lane. So we're gonna create two push at once by uh, playing the footmen correctly in the middle. This is going to be huge because in one lane we're going to be able to play our Tyrion to heal uh, those footmen. In the in the other lane we're going to play our Frostwolf Shaman to heal those other two footmen. So if your opponent overcommits by defending too much one of the two lanes, well, then the other lane is going to deal so, so much damage. So once again, guys, crazy list. This is the most fun list for me. Uh, it is very good in PvE, but very, very good in PvP as well also all of these decks are gonna be so um yeah i hope you guys love this deck please tell me which deck is your favorite and uh let's jump into the next one oh yeah and this is an alliance faction uh deck next up we have we have a hogger cycle list for you guys so the hogger list uses obviously hogger but we also use the murloc uh the quillbore the defies bandit the whelp eggs the safe pilot and the huntress so what is the idea behind this deck so the hogger has the ability of relentless where hoggers movement and attack speed increases 35 percent each time he's played so the idea is to play the hogger as many times as possible because he's going to become much stronger and how do you play him uh more often you do that by having a lot of cycle so what do i mean by cycle okay so a cycle is doing a full rotation of your list. So let's say you play your hogger, you wanna cycle back to your hogger a second time as quickly as possible. And how can you do so, right? You can only do so by playing very um, cheap mini. So that's why we're playing uh, one cost, two costs, uh, and uh, three costs. And we only, ha we only have the Huntress because the Huntress is um, very, very broken. But this is the main idea. It's a hogger cycle list. 
So we play the Hogger. Uh, how does the Hogger attack? The Hogger does some splash damage in front of it. Uh, so really, really good. But obviously, once you played it a couple of times, I think it stacks at three. I think the Hogger stacks at three. Um, but please correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, at that third time, he's going to do so much damage because he's going to attack so quickly and he's going to move so much quicker and he's going to apply so much pressure on your opponent's base and opponent meaties. So our first cycle meanie is the Murloc Tidehunter. So I just mentioned, I just talked about the Murlocs. So guys, if you guys jumped and skip the last deck, uh, the Murloc Tidehunters were in that deck. So look for the description there. I'm not going to talk much more about the Murlocs. I already explained them uh, in the last deck. Uh, but really good because they're two gold, so really good to cycle in this list. Next up, we have the Quillbore. So the Quillbore is another unbound mini. So an unbound mini, like I mentioned earlier, is a mini you can play anywhere on the map. And uh, this one is probably one of the best in the game. So it is two gold, so it's really good to play on any chest or any uh, stones. If you, you got to take a stone, well, you can just play the Quillbore on it. Um, yeah, Quillbore is very, very good. It doesn't do that much damage, but just the ability of playing it any, uh, anywhere is very, very good because you can combo it with other stuff, uh, destroy some backline, distract some stuff. Um, so really, really good. Next up, we have the Defias Bandits. So the Defias Bandits are one uh, gold mini, which is fantastic because obviously of that cycle potential of uh, being one gold. But they're very, very good, uh, even for that one gold. So they have the ability of, uh, well, first of all, they're uh, cloaked, which means they're invisible or won't be targeted by enemies until they uh, reveal themselves, okay? And the, once they reveal themselves, they actually stun enemies uh, with their attack. So they're really, really good in defense if you can play them correctly. They're very, very good. Next up, we have, once again, the Whelp Eggs. So I talked about the Whelp Eggs in the Ren Black Hand list. You play them, they're eggs, they, have, uh, they need to be attacked or they won't do anything. But once they're attacked, they hatch and they deal a um, good amount of damage and they're really good to distract and defend. What's good about the Whelp Eggs uh, in this list is that once they reveal, well, then you can play the Quill Bore to protect them and then just create a good amount of pressure. Once again, in this list, we have the safe pile. So I think you guys are uh, starting to see a pattern. The safe pilot, guys, is one of the best units in the game, if it's not the best unit. Um, it's crazy good. The amount of damage from the explosion by itself, I think, is worth three gold. And then we have the uh, safe pilot, which is going to attack afterwards. Crazy, crazy good unit, uh, but crash into some uh, important units, important uh, enemy units, and uh, you'll get... Um, some crazy good value. So finally in this list, we also have the Huntress. So the Huntress is our most expensive mini in this list. And the idea is to play the Huntress uh, with the uh, Hogger. The Huntress is just very, very good. She's uh, also another S tier unit or SS tier unit. Um, she deals so much damage and she's also an uh, anti-air unit. So she basically doesn't have that many weaknesses. And... Um, yeah, paired with the Hogger, it's going to create just a huge amount of push. But she's also really, really good to defend. So you can like defend with the um, defend with the Huntress and then spawn your Hogger. And then the Hogger is going to move forward uh, in past in front of the Huntress. Um, very, very good. The Huntress is also very good because she's fast, which means she moves really quickly. So she, even if you play her um, a little bit later, she's going to catch up so quickly. And uh, she's going to be able to support um, your Hogger and uh, your rest, right? So, uh, crazy good deck as well. Um, I think this one is just uh, a tad bit under for the PvP, but for PvE, it can be very good, uh, especially on certain PvE maps. All right, next up, we have my favorite uh, undead leader, and it's Baron Riven there. So this is a Baron Riven there cycle list, uh, sorry, Necromancer list. Because the main idea is to play our Baron River there and our Necromancer. So we're going to get into the Necromancer very soon. This list uses Baron River there, the Gargoyle, the Ghoul, the Qu uh, Quillbore, the Blizzard, 
the Necromancer and the Harpies. So very, very, very good list. Once again, a lot of units we've already talked about. We've talked about Gargoyle, Quillbore, Harpies. Um, so let's skip then quickly and go over the other three units. We have the Ghoul. The Ghoul is a two cost uh, gold tank and uh, he has a crazy ability when he kills an enemy there's gonna um, there's gonna be like a body on the floor and the ghoul is gonna feed upon that body and heal back his health so this is very very good because that means sometimes he's gonna stay alive just for so long and in defense uh, it's very 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 good so uh, Baron Riven there let's go over Baron Riven there what Baron Riven there do um, he has the passive ability of Army of the Dead, uh, which means Riven there periodically summons Skeleton at building you control. Which means we're always going to have so much pressure in every single lane because we're going to have Skeletons that are going to spawn all the time. So our opponent won't be able to play a Miner for free. He won't be able to play really um, cheap stuff for free because our Skeletons are going to destroy it. Uh, so Baron Riven there, very, very good as a passive ability. So that passive ability from Baron Riven there is really good with the Ghoul. Uh, because if the Ghoul um, starts tanking a lot and stays uh, immobile for like a, lo a lot of time, well, there's going to be skeletons that are going to stack uh, on that push. And there's going to be skeleton from our Baron Riven there, but also from our Necromancer. So our Necromancer is the unit that is going to spawn the most skeletons, right? So Baron Riven there spawns some skeletons, but now we also have the Necromancer that spawns uh, skeletons. And uh, yeah, very, very good unit because the Necromancer himself also does some very, very good damage. So we're seeing in every single list the Gargoyle. The Gargoyle is very, very strong. And we can see even here in the video that um, the that the Necromancer deals a lot of damage to the Gargoyle, which makes him very, very powerful. Why is it really good against a Gargoyle? That's because the Gargoyle is armored, so he takes 50% less physical damage, and the Necromancer deals um, elemental damage. So Gargoyle resistant against physical damage, and the Necromancer does elemental damage to the air. Um, so he's going to deal a crazy amount of damage to the Gargoyle, uh, which makes him very, very good. So really important, guys, to uh, note the resistant armored trait and what they do. Really important for you guys to understand um, that. So in this list, we also have, uh, like I mentioned, the Quillbore and Harpies. So we can create some very good push by playing our Harpies and then playing our Quillbore um, to tank for the tower. So this is a crazy good combo. Um, look out for a combo video that's going to come out uh, shortly. But yeah, Quillbore and Harpies together, very, very strong. And then you have Necromancer with the Ghoul, but you also have Necromancer with Bear Rivet there. So I quickly talked about the passive, and now let's talk about the unit. So he's another fast unit that costs four, uh, and he's armored, okay? So once again, he's going to take less damage from uh, physical uh, damage, but he's um, he's also fast, which means he's really good to push on certain lanes and to push with uh, like the Necromancer or something like that. He's a very good tank, and he's a tank that moves very, very quickly. This is really good because you can catch up on by surprise um, when he's out of gold with a Baron Riven there in a lane. And then, finally, we have the Gargoyle once again. However, this time it's different. The way we want to play the Gargoyle is to uh, put it in another lane than where you are pushing with the rest. So you're going to play Bear right there, Necromancer, Ghoul, maybe even Quillborn and Harpy, stuff like that uh, in a lane. And then your opponent is going to have to answer. And once he answers, you drop the Gargoyle in the other lane and there's nothing your opponent is going to be able to do. If your opponent does have a counter for the Gargoyle, then you have your Blizzard to be able to destroy that um, that counter to the Gargoyle. So if your opponent plays a Necromancer, well, then you play your Blizzard on the Necromancer, and then you get uh, a lot of value. So guys, this is also one of my uh, favorite lists, one of the best lists um, in the game. In the uh, PvP meta, it is very very popular very very good so uh yeah that's why it's here on the list the list is in no particular order by the way and then finally we have uh this is our undead list in case you guys uh, didn't understand 
Uh, and finally, for our last list, we have a uh, grow mash list. So this is a uh, grow mash bloodlust list from the Horde faction. It plays grow mash, the Stonehoof Torin, the Dark Spear Troll, the Murlocs, the, the uh, Frostwolf Shaman, the Ghoul, and the Safe Pilot. So a lot of units we've already seen with the Safe Pilot, the Ghoul, the Shaman, the Dark Spear Troll, and the Murlocs. Uh, but we also have the Stonehoof Torin, and we have Gromash. So let's go uh, quickly over Gromash first. So Gromash, another four cost. I think they're all four costs. Uh, in the, all no, Rand is six cost. Um, yeah. So Gromash, what he does, he has the ability of for the Horde, where all nearby friendly units gain Bloodlust, and Bloodlust is. Uh, 33 percent increased movement speed and attack speed. So all the units around him are going to get this buff, which is very good when you combo it with uh, some other stuff. Gromash by himself, he's fairly tanky, but not too much. He doesn't have armor or anything like that. So uh, you kind of don't want him to be played uh, alone because once he gets destroyed, your other units lose the bloodlust uh, and we're gone. So that's why we play uh, the ghoul and the Stonehoof Torrent. So what is the Stonehoof Torrent? The Stonehoof Torrent is a unit that charges into battle. So the Stonehoof Torrent, once it engage, in, engages enemies, it's going to charge the first target it sees, uh, and it's going to deal a good amount of damage, and then she's going to start uh, attacking, which is very good against a lot of different units. So the Stonehoof, very good, especially with Gromash. Uh, she's going to do so much uh, damage and also she's gonna charge in front of Gromash. So Gromash is still gonna apply uh, pressure. He's still gonna attack, but the Stonehoof is gonna be just a little bit in front, and so she's gonna be the one soaking the damage for Gromash. So for the other units, we also we have the um, so basically all unit that works well with the Bloodlust. We have the Frostwolf Shaman. So the Frostwolf Shaman is actually gonna heal more because the attack speed is increased by 33 percent. So that means he's gonna heal more often, which is very good. I love the Shaman. I love it uh, in this list because it's gonna chain lightning on like your Gromash, your Torin, your Ghoul or something like that. Um, or even herself, she can chain back on herself if she's close enough. So uh, yeah, she has some very good target to heal. We also have the Dark Spirit Troll. Once again, uh, anti-air unit, very, very good. Uh, the, the Dark Spirit Troll, actually, actually I'm not sure we place Dark Spirit Troll in another the list. Maybe we did. Uh, but the Dark Special very good for anti-air. And then with increased attack speed, uh, the Dark Special is going to do so, so much damage. It's uh, one of the biggest uh, DPS unit in the game, but it's very, very weak. Um, so that's why we heat the Stone of Torin and the Ghoul. We have some other tanks to play in front. So try to keep your Dark Spear Troll alive. Uh, very, very important. And we also have some Murlocs in this list. So we wanted some other cheap stuff. Uh, the Murlocs are also very good. And once again... To get the chest um yeah and then finally once again guys we have the safe pilot so <laughs> finally I'm not, i don't think i have to mention a lot uh i don't think i have to say a lot about the safe pilot once again use it to get a lot of value it's very easy to generate some value with the uh safe pilot so yeah guys this is gonna be it for me uh i hope you guys enjoy i hope this is useful please tell me um if you guys enjoyed these decks please tell me which one is your favorite tell me which one worked the best for you guys and uh yeah guys jump on the stream if i'm still alive um and uh yeah i'll see you guys in the next one bye guys take care